This video is intended for students in Beauclair Academy studying higher graphic communication. It is on the topic of design elements and principles, which should not be a new topic. This builds upon the work that you've done in S3 and S4. Good graphic design relies on the graphic designer understanding what makes a layout work. The graphic designer breaks the layout down into smaller parts and works with each part in turn. These smaller parts are called design elements and design principles. You need to understand design elements and design principles and be able to write about them in the course exam. You will also be expected to use them in the promotional layouts. You should be familiar with the list. Design elements. In National 5, the only design elements that were required to be known by pupils were line, colour and shape. In addition to this at higher, you will now have to know about texture, value, mass, weight and white space. Design principles. At National 5, you need to know balance, alignment, contrast, depth, unity and dominance and in higher, they also add in rhythm. Don't think of the elements and principles in isolation. Design elements are the building blocks and are normally physical items on the page. These create the design principles. The best way to look at these is to look at some examples. Line. Compare the two layouts for the blue stick shown below and discuss which looks better and why. As you can see in the layout, they're basically the same, although the one on the left is a slightly not as good a quality image, but they're both basically the same image apart from a white line has been added below the blue stick heading and just slightly above the supporting our customers. The right hand layout is the same as the left but with two horizontal lines added. These lines bring a number of benefits to the layout. They pass through and link both sides of the unit. The top line underlines and emphasises the product name. The bottom line passes behind the memory stick, creating depth. It pushes the memory stick forward. The lower line separates the space at the foot for the slogan. Positioning the lines at the top and bottom of the layout connects the two areas, creating unity and the lines are positioned carefully to create strong alignment. This helps to organize and give structure to the layout. So you can see how you adding two simple lines can create a number of design principles. Line continued. The use of line can be important and effective technique to enhance a page or layout. It can be used to connect parts of a layout, establish columns of text, create movement, define a shape, emphasizing a word or phrase, separating parts of design from others. In the three examples here shown below, different things or different lines are used to try and help um, improve the layout. So in times we have got lines which separate off items. So there may be a line between two columns of text. There may be lines underneath text to emphasize it. There may be lines used as a box around a shape, again, to define that. Lines are very important at improving a layout. Color. Using color creatively can make an enormous difference to the impact of a layout. It is important to consider color combinations in a layout, not just individual colors. It is how colours work together that makes a difference. Used well, colour combinations can make a product stand out, give a layout visual impact, unify a layout or tying it together, connect with a target market or suggest a mood. The following slides demonstrate how colour can be used to improve a layout. The layout is to promote a chaise long. The lounger has three colours, lilac, purple and pale brown. 
These colours are fixed, they will not change. The colours chosen for the rest of the layout must work with those three colours. When colours don't work. This scheme includes too many colours. There's 11 in total. They work against each other and the image of the lounger gets lost in the rainbow of colour. There is no unity or harmony and contrast is conflicting. There is no real focal point. Your eyes dart all over the place. Probably they go to the little yellow flash bar um, behind the text. But in general, your eye doesn't know where to go. It's rather horrible looking. In this example, the colour scheme includes only the colours that already appear on the lounger, plus one other, four in total. Because the same colours appear in each of the three areas, they help to unify the layout. The colours don't fight with each other. They harmonise the layout and support the relaxed mood of the product. So as you can see, the pale blue in the background is repeated in every area and the only other colours are the purple, which is already in the lounger, the brown and the pale blue. This third colour scheme uses green on all three flash bars. This creates contrast with the purple on the lounger. It makes the purple stand out. The circle and the big splash design text use the same purple as the lounger. The purple becomes the accent colour. It stands out and ties the three parts of the layout together. Shape. The rectangle is a predominant shape in graphic layouts. This is because computer screens and magazine pages are rectangular. Photographs and columns of text are also rectangular. Using other shapes in the layout can help introduce contrast and create visual impact. In these examples here, in the first example in the top left corner, all of the shapes are rectangular. None of them are particularly bigger than the rest and there is no dominant feature. When we move on to the second one in the top right, cropping the main image introduces another shape. This makes it less formal and more contemporary, but the layout is still too bland. The text looks clumsy. Moving down to the bottom left, all the images have been fully cropped in this third, first, the third version. Asymmetrical shapes have been, have been used in place of the frames and the text is wrapped around the main image. The result is a modern informal feel that complements the lamp. The fourth layout in the bottom right corner uses another rectangle and softer ellipse shapes. It shows how shape can be used to create a different feel. The circles on the left repeat the, the soft shapes and create unity and rhythm. The rectangle is the predominant shape in graphic layout. So here again, we can see we have got rectangles forming pages of a, a leaflet, but to try and create contrast, we have used circles of different colors. Texture. Texture gives a design a look, feel, or a surface. There are two types of texture. There is physical texture and visual texture. Physical texture is a texture which can be felt. This can be done through the use of different types of paper and can be smooth, rough, bumpy, shiny and dull. Visual texture is used to create the illusion of texture on a printed piece of work. For example, using the image of tree bark, water, sand in a background can add texture to a page. It is probably very unusual that you will use physical texture in any of your um, pages in higher graphic communication. But visual texture is one that you could easily use. Value. Value simply refers to how light or dark design elements appear. 
white is the lightest value, while black is the darkest. All other colours have value and sit within the range of light to dark. For example, yellow has a relatively light value and purple has a relatively dark value. The Howard Wing website is simple and elegant and uses value very effectively. The large dark valued photograph background used throughout the site works well with the light text. White space. White space is any section of a document that is unused or space around an object. White space helps separate photographs of text, graphics and other portions of a document and helps a document look less crowded. White space creates a rest for the eyes and visually organises what's on a page. White space attracts the eyes, increases a layout's appeal, improves readability, gives focus and emphasis on a project, directs a viewer's eyes. Mass. Mass equals size. There are two kinds of mass. There is physical size and visual size. The main graphic here forms the largest mass. The other elements of less mass are therefore less important. White space has the greatest mass on this page. Graphic forms a smaller mass on the page. The body text is the greater mass. Balance. Understanding balance is simple. Look at the layout for a fruit juice shown below and discuss which looks better and why. The above layout is cluttered and looks disorganised. The content is too spread out and there are too many different areas to look at and read. Your eyes don't know where to go because the bottle sits in the middle of the page. Moving the bottle off centre creates asymmetry. This is more eye catching. Text is confined to the right and top of the layout. It flows and is easier to read. In most layouts, there is a rectangular space to fill. When the product is placed in the middle of the page, it creates a symmetrical layout but leaves two tricky areas on either side to fill. Your eyes don't know where to go first, left or right, or bounce back and forth between them. When the main item is offset, it creates an asymmetrical layout, leaving a single space which is easier to fill. Rule of thirds. When a layout space is divided into nine equal rectangles, four lines dividing the space provide four co-points. Placing important features on or close to a line can create a more visually pleasing layout. Impact points where the lines cross are key areas to locate important features. Here in the finished layout of the fruit juice bottle, the bottle has been scaled up to create dominance. The product name has been shrunk to fit in the space on the right and the fruit juice text has been sized and aligned. But more importantly, the bottle has been placed on one of these rule of third lines to, cre to create the focal point. Depth has been created. Alignment. Good alignment helps improve the structure of a layout. It makes a page feel organised and easy to follow. It contributes to neatness and sharpness. The example above shows an example of a badly aligned uh, layout. At first when you look at it, you maybe don't realise how badly aligned it is. The layout is poorly aligned and looks untidy. You can see when the guidelines are added the lack of alignment. Taking a guideline at the edge of every part of this, you can see there is no real alignment being used. Items have just been placed wherever on the page. Using a grid, guidelines and the snap feature when setting up a layout, this layout is now accurately aligned. The result 
is a much more pleasing layout that looks and feels organised and is easier to follow. To use alignment, look for edges that can be aligned and do it accurately. Strong alignment creates organised, structured and easy to follow layouts. In item 3 here, you can see the alignment, strong left alignment between the left hand edge of the big, the left hand edge of apple and the left hand edge of the body text. In addition to that, there is strong right alignment between the left hand edge of the graphic design box, the right hand edge of the subheading and the right hand edge of the body text and the right hand edge of the apple. Contrast. Contrast is about differences and especially opposites. Opposites like black and white, vertical and horizontal, or circles and squares stand out when they're used together in a layout. They become eye-catching and can help give a, a layout visual impact. Here in this example, there is no real contrast. This promotion lacks contrast. The chair images are all the same size, the fonts are in the same typeface and size, and the colours harmonise. Nothing stands out or catches the eye. While the alignment is strong, it lacks visual impact. The fine tuning of this second layout improves it, especially its visual impact. The key changes are relative are related to contrast, creating differences throughout the layout. The 2D chairs have been shrunk and the 3D one scaled up, creating contrast in size. The large size of type used on the title contrasts with the smaller text. The background colour creates contrast with the blue of the chair and the circles are added to contrast with the rectangles. Depth. Creating the illustration or illusion of depth in a 2D page is an important way to give your layout more visual impact. It is easily done using one of the methods below. Starting at the top left, this is just an image placed on a white background. It looks like it's floating. Placing a line or a box behind the image so that the image cuts through the box will give depth. Placing a colour fill or flash bar behind the image also creates depth if the image breaks out of the colour fill. Placing text behind an image can create depth. Placing other images behind the main image can create depth. Creating a drop shadow behind the image can create depth. Or using a combination can help to create depth in a page. Unity, repetition and harmony, making connections. Layouts are often made up of many different parts or items. It is important to connect them together in some way. This page looks at some methods of this. Overlapping an image onto text can create unity. It makes a physical connection between the text and the image. Lines can do the same. Placing the lines behind the image connects and unifies the combination. Using a colour fill behind two, two items can connect them. The text and the torch are connected by the, flu, by the blue flash bar. Repeating colours in different parts of the layout. Repetition can, be, can tie items together. Repeating features in separate positions can create unity. The double lines tell the eye that this is a unified layout. Using text wrap can help to create unity in a page. Or, in the final large item here, a number of repetition etc has been asked, has been used. Dominus and emphasis. Graphic layouts are often scanned quickly by the reader. If the layout is bland or without a focal point, it may not hold the reader's attention long enough to get its message across. Your layouts will include graphics and text. The text may be split into two or three parts, a title or heading, a body text, plus further possible information. 
These contexts need to be arranged to create a strong focal point. Normally, this is the main graphic or photograph on the page. There should be an order of dominance in the layout that lead the reader. The main graphic or picture should dominate the layout. The title, heading or product name should be next. Less important items should be grouped and positioned carefully to support this order of importance. Dominance and emphasis are related elements. Dominance occurs when one item stands out more than others. It dominates the layout. Emphasis happens when there is an item is made more eye-catching. The layout above has been aligned carefully, but it lacks visual impact. The space is filled, but there is no focal point. The images are too similar in size and are spread out around the layout. The product name does its job, but lacks impact. The layout above has been improved by creating a focal point by enlarging an image and positioning it carefully, making it the most dominant item on the page. Grouping smaller images and scaling them down to make the focal point more dominant. Changing the font to create the contrast and underline, using an underline to add emphasis to the main heading. Rhythm. Rhythm is used to achieve movement and is the visual progression of repeating elements in a varied pattern. Many pages of identical columns of text should be varied with the use of headlines, subheadings and images. Repeat a similar shape in various areas of a layout. Repeat the same element in the same position on every page of a printed publication such as a newsletter. Repeat a series of similar shaped elements with even white spaces between each to create a regular rhythm. Repeat a series of progressively larger elements with larger white spaces between each for a progressive rhythm. Repeating of colour, shapes, fonts, etc. gives the page a lively rhythm which contrasts with the quiet pastel colours used.